States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Um, we're missing a couple of board members tonight. Uh, Stan Miller is not with us, and Aaron Zoltman is not with us, but Brian Murphy, Adam, Tom, and I'm here, uh, along with Brett Boggs, our superintendent, assistant superintendent, Blaine Conley, and secretary, Jessica McFarland. Okay, we'll get going here. Um, upcoming board meetings, November 13th, 2017. We have a regular meeting at the Mentone Elementary at 7 p.m. December 11, 2017, regular meeting, Mentone Elementary at 7 p.m. And January 15, 2018, regular meeting at the Burkett Education Center at 7 p.m. We'll move on with the spotlight on the ballot. Okay, we have a couple of things tonight, Todd. First of all, I'd like to uh, welcome and introduce uh, one of our new employees, and that would be Melinda Camp. Uh, Melinda, welcome to Tippecanoe Valley. She is the new secretary receptionist uh, at the administration office. Uh, so we're glad to have her there. Anything, Melinda, you'd like to share with the group tonight? Um, a lot of people here already know me, so thank you for the opportunity to continue to serve my, my community in a different capacity. And we still hired. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Linda. I'm glad you're here. And then we have um, a special presentation tonight by Lisa Adams, who's the instructor of the B-Ram Preschool. It's housed at the Akron Elementary School facility. So, Lisa, you're welcome to come up, or do you want to do this? It doesn't matter to me. You tell me. Well, well, come up here so the camera can get you on TV. No. Yeah. 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 You gotta look at me. You know. Okay, no, I'll look at it again. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm Lisa Adams. I've been at Beaver Dam Preschool since 1999. I know, it's been a while. I thought what I would do is give you a little history about the preschool. Um, in 1981, it's been a day or three ago, there was a young lady at the church that decided there was a need for preschool services to get kids prepared for preschool. That young lady's name was Pam McFarland. I think that'll sound familiar to several of you. When she opened the program in 81, she had 17 students. There were four four-year-olds, and there were 10 three-year-old students. In 2003, the preschool was given the opportunity to move our program to Akron Elementary School. We do lease our room. We pay rent for the room. And for us, that was a wonderful opportunity because we were able to reach out to so many more kids. And that is the whole goal, is to get kids prepared. Today, I have three classes. There is a three-year-old class of 15 students and I have two four-year-old classes. Uh, one meets in the morning, and then one meets in the afternoon. I have 31 four-year-old students getting ready to go to kindergarten. Our only requirement is that students be toilet trained, and that they are three or four on August the 1st. We follow the same um, date of birth as a school does, so that they're not going to school for preschool for three years. Um, the curriculum that we use is based on the needs of the students. Obviously, you cannot expect a three-year-old to do what a four-year-old will do. Um, you need to work on the basics. Um, separation from mom, typically, is difficult. Um, following directions, listening skills, learning to problem solve on their own. Um, yes, we do work on color, shapes, numbers, and all those other things too. Four-year-old students, yes, we do push them much harder because they're getting ready to go to kindergarten. So not only do we work on those skills, we also work on your letters, your numbers, letter sounds, um, all of those things that go with kindergarten. 
we also have been working with Mrs. Feigert with the STEM. And so we're incorporating the STEM in with our program. So when those kids go to kindergarten, they'll already be familiar with it, and it'll be such an easy transition for them. Um, keeping that in mind, I always remember that there is never one program that works for every child. It's important to me. We've got to meet those kids where they're at and help them obtain their fullest potential, no matter what that is. So that's, that is my personal goal. You know, as a preschool representative, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity that we've been given at this school because we have been able to reach out and get two more students, and we're just helping them be prepared. Um, my new classroom's up there. I will tell you, it is amazing. I have told my husband, I could just stay here. <laughs> I don't really need to go home. <laughs> you don't miss your old classroom? Not at all. <laughs> it is, it, there's so much space. Um, we have the smart board. It's not hooked up yet. Uh, we have been able to use the whiteboard though, and having the kids come up and use that to make letters, make numbers, they get so excited about that. Um, so I'm really anxious to get that going, and hopefully this week they thought they could get that going. So I'm really anxious to get that going, and the programs that we can do with the kids there, I think will be wonderful. Um, we also, oh, we have a dry erase table. Our church is very, very supportive of our program. Um, because of our church, we have a smart table, a, or the, a dry erase table. We have new chairs. We have new um, kitchen set. We have a new dollhouse. We have a new, you know, and you go, oh, those are toys. But you know what, those are very important for those kids, very important. One of the gentlemen of our church made the, the uh, barn for us. Um, and the same gentleman, I came, after he did such a good job with that, I said, hey, I got a plan. And he's like, what do you have now? And I said, well, I want to buy my, my door from my old classroom. And I want you to make it into an activity table. And he said, well, I've never done that before, but I bet we can. And there is a picture of it on here. So there it is. There's my door. It's my old door. And uh, so we cut it down to size. And that is my activity table. That we get to change things out with the kids. So, and as you can tell, I really like Dr. Seuss. I have a problem with Dr. Seuss. I, I'm a little obsessed. But uh, yeah, it is really a wonderful it's such a great opportunity and to have the restrooms in the in the classroom is so wonderful so. is that your carpeted in there is that the move down the carpet yeah. 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 yeah yeah it is very nice if you're ever in stop and see it. In that area that area is uh, it's a wild floor oh, oh yeah I can't use all the storage. Um, of course, I don't put anything clear at the top because because we know I have this problem. <laughs> um, so I haven't used the top at all. So. Thank you for coming in and sharing with us. Thank you. Okay, on to items from the visitors. Do we have anything <coughs> visitors would like to add? If not, we'll move on to the approval of the consent agenda. Number one, approve, it, approve the minutes of September 6, 2017 executive session. Number two, approve the minutes of the September 11, 2017 regular meeting. Number three, approve the minutes of the September 18th, 
2017 special meeting. Number four, approve the hiring of the following personnel. Joshua Early, custodian at the high school. Katie? Katie. Katie. Keeler Heller, yeah, cook at the middle school. Joshua Ferris, instructional assistant at the middle school. David Koch, bus mechanic at the for the corporation. Melinda Camp, secretary receptionist for the school corporation. And Arnie Rogers, Amy, Ro Amy Rogers, study hall supervisor for the high school. Number five, approve the following extracurricular assignments. Bill Patrick, boys varsity assistant basketball coach for the high school. Matt Tolson, boys freshman basketball coach for the high school. Thad Malott, boys golf coach for the high school. Jennifer Seacris, sixth grade cheer coach for the middle school. Anthony Newcomer, 7th and 8th grade boys basketball B team coach for the middle school. Jenny Nelson, 6th grade girls basketball coach for the middle school. Mark Davis, 8th grade girls basketball coach for the middle school. Jared Littlejohn, 8th grade boys basketball coach for the middle school. Sarah Hoff, assistant track coach for the middle school. Gary Kraft, soccer coach for the middle school. That's all of that. Uh, on to number six, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Cassia Richardson, cook for the high school. Dolores Dagg, cook at the Mentone Elementary. Kyle Ritchie, boys freshman C-team basketball coach for the high school. Kara Hackworth, sixth grade cheer coach for the middle school. And Brittany Bush, physical education teacher for the high school. Number seven, approve termination of employment for the following personnel. Catherine Scott, cheer coach for the middle school. Number eight, approve the maternity leaves for the following personnel. Haley Cooper, first grade teacher at Akron Elementary. Number nine, approve the overnight trip for the TVHS student council. Is there anything there, fellas, that you need, want to pull out or talk about? I'll make the motion to approve the agenda. Ask your Brian makes a motion. Do I have a second? <coughs> Add in seconds. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Uh, ayes have it. On to approval of claims and payroll. Okay, thank you, Todd. We have one pre rent claim listing this evening. It's dated September the 30th of 2017 in the amount of $856,438.04. Our regular claim listing is dated October 9, 2017 in the amount of $111,000. $600.75. And then we have payrolls this evening dated September 1, 2017 in the amount of $402,101.18. September 15, 2017 in the amount of $419,532.99. And September 29, 2017 in the amount of $396,000. $341.15. I submit these claims to payroll for your approval. Okay, anything fellas want to pull out and discuss or do I have a motion to accept? I'll make that motion to accept. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? I believe I'll second that. Brian seconds. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Good there. On to the financial report. You have the reconciled bank statement in monthly financial report funds for the month of September 2017. Uh, in summary, our receipts and disbursements are uh, total receipts for all funds $1,613,693.34, total 
total disbursements for all funds, $2,257,836.88. Okay. On to old business update on the Akron Elementary School project. Mr. Betterling, you've got to give us an update on the project tonight. All right. The uh, work in progress for the last month has been uh, continued the uh, uh, unit A grid uh, ceilings and uh, painting in that area. And, uh, the painting is about, should finish this week. Uh, they started the borders on the uh, ceiling tile. So that will be moving right along this, this week. We'll allow those rooms down in the area we're going to turn over. <coughs> They've completed the uh, exterior brick on the south side of uh, the gym area of the, the unit B section and uh, they almost completed the precast in front of that in the entry area of uh, um, on the south side of unit B. Uh, continued site work for parking lots and sidewalks and this time they completed about 80 percent of the lawn uh, seating on the north and the west and uh, the uh, pond area has all been uh, seated at this time. I noticed this morning it is coming up. They use a 50-50 you know, grass seed. And so the right grass is coming up pretty good. They continued the interior masonry and the locker rooms. Uh, that should uh, complete this week started the roofing for uh, locker room area. They've completed the uh, EFA system and repairs for the uh, exterior part of the uh, unit A of the uh, 87 wing. Looks a lot, much, lot, much better at this time. And completed demo for the existing restrooms there in, in unit A. It's been changed, I think you're probably aware of what changes were in that, in that area. But they've completed the demo and started some masonry work to rebuild the uh, uh, CMUs at the entrance to that new restroom area. As far as mechanical and electrical, they've continued the HVAC work in the boiler room, uh, completed plumbing, all rough in the locker room area, and continued light fixtures uh, throughout Unit A. All the new classrooms that we'll be turning over. Uh, started plumbing fixtures in uh, Unit A. There's two new restrooms that will be turned over in uh, the 20th, I think, of uh, this month. And started plumbing uh, rough ends for the new restrooms uh, in Unit uh, A that's been modified. Kind of the work that's been going on. <clears throat> work for the next four weeks will be uh, completing the sidewalks and uh, paving for the parking lots. Right now the paving is scheduled to start October 30th for everything that's in balance yet to be, be paid. Uh, start demo of phase two in unit day. Uh, instead of uh, the north and west side of that area, we're going to do just the north four classrooms. It makes a better flow for the uh, students as uh, you know, school continues here. So we'll get them uh, north classrooms done, and we'll do the four west ones, which includes the library area, these two libraries. That makes a lot better flow keep us working and students being able to get around through that area. Uh, <clears throat> roofing for the uh, locker room area uh, looks like it's going to start uh, October 16th. That's a week from today. And we, um, basketball goals in the gym are scheduled to start uh, the 23rd of this month. And uh, we get dried out real good. There'll be painting in the locker room area. I need that roof on and less rain. Because that rain does saturate the walls, you know, comes down, so it, it just, you know, 
got to wait till they dry out real good before you can paint. Um, complete grid and ceiling tile throughout that area, and uh, gym floor is to start um, November 1st. And of course, you need to get other work done before the gym floor, and then fly, follow up with the bleachers right after the floor. They'll continue flooring in unit A. Right now, the flooring is about probably 60% uh, done. They're holding off on the uh, corridors. There'll be a lot of activity through the corridors for construction, and, and we get the carpet down is not a good thing. So we'll be uh, holding off on the hallways, but all the rooms will be down on the east side and down through the middle. And the classrooms will be completed. And they will continue doors and hardware in the unit area. And mechanical and electrical. They will continue work in the boiler room and, and uh, the mechanical rooms uh, throughout A and uh, some work yet in uh, unit B. Uh, balancing of the system, we need to start in two weeks. Should be going on, but we need the contractors in to do that. Uh, they continue overhead mechanic on plumbing in the locker room area, and continue light fixtures uh, throughout unit you know, uh, A and B, where the, the new uh, uh, restrooms and locker rooms are going in. And continue plumbing fixtures throughout restroom areas and uh, they should continue uh, parking lot uh, light poles. That should maybe be completed within uh, this week or next for sure. They would quarter a lot of holes for the light pole bases today and uh, we'll be quartering some of those tomorrow. So all those will be uh, above grade, about three foot hit a pole, they hit the concrete first. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go. See, you have some pictures there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, unit A area. I don't know which room that is there, but uh, you can see it has the uh, it's metal uh, <coughs> shelving there. To, uh, the end and then the new marker boards and the tech board above it, and carpets in that area also. And I think the next one there is the, will be the new art room. You can see there's uh, different colors and design in the floor, you know, curved design throughout that area. That's all done except one color that they didn't have in yet. Here's the yellow strip that goes to the side of the dark strip. <coughs> the next one there is, uh, I guess after this one, they had the ceremony for the uh, time capsule. Time capsule. And time capsule. And I'm thinking you can see it, but I'm just pointing at it right there. And that now is closed up with uh, precast or limestone. Time capsule is it for what somebody said a hundred years. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think all the kids enjoyed that. It was quite a, really a nice time capsule that we got a hold of. It was nice stainless steel and better than a plastic bottle. So, huh? It's amazing how much stuff she got in there too. Oh, she got yeah. stuff. Amazing amount of stuff in there. <laughs> Some skills. Oh, yeah. That does still be good. And an old yeah. flip, one of them old flip phones, you know, with obsolete already. Careful, Mr. Cowley still uses it. No, no, I jumped around that. <laughs> uh, there's a view to the uh, south end of the, that'd be the new main entrance. Big opening there. That will be uh, three pair of doors. So that's the main entrance, and it'll go right into the cafeteria area. To the right of that is the gym, and uh, there'll be a lot of canopy out in front where uh, students can be under a, a roof 
and the buses will park out on this sidewalk and then on the other part so they'll have a place to stand out there and if needed. So. Now that's the precast there that says Akron too, is that right there, Jim? Uh, yes, that's the Akron right there. Yeah, don't show up very good there. That's a nice precast with a date on it. So the buses will come, how will they? Well, uh, I think they will drive up to that walk. And so the kids can come down the walk and load up on the right front corner of the bus. Okay. Uh, I, think there, I think there are 13 buses, is that right? Well, they line up around there. I think that's what I believe. Yeah. We're, we're playing long. So they'll line up around there. Kind of facing north, facing the, uh, the building, and then others will face this uh, big sidewalk right here that you see. That that's a little closer view. Uh, the forum that's a forum there that will be pouring concrete. Uh, that will be all sidewalk there in front. You can see the uh, canopy. It's a pretty good size area that kids can be under in the rain issues. Uh, and the buses will drive up to that one also. It's all ready to pour. Or we'll just have a couple of issues of waiting for some weather to well, good weather forecast, I guess. We're gonna pour some up tomorrow, but and right there is the uh, entrance to the uh, revised uh, restroom area in the, uh, the in the northeast corner of uh, Unit A. That'll be the entrance area right there that you see. That's, uh, that's the plumbing and yeah, being set up in the restroom between the uh, between the walls. Uh, that's all new floor in that area. Break it out so we can get the uh, underground work done in that area. And that's that would be an entrance area at uh, the uh, south restrooms. That's about done. Two of those drinking fountains. Uh, the restroom to the left and then to the right of that door is another drinking fountain and then another restroom on that side. So. That's down the area where, where the office used to be. Yes, right. that's right where the office used to be. Of course, that floor had to be taken out so we could get all the underground work in that area. And there's uh, some of the fixtures in one, one of those restrooms. That is a uh, staff restroom area right next to that. And that is the corridor right out in front of that area. I think that's facing to the uh, south. You can't see the you can't see the door down there, but that's facing south. And there is the uh, unit B restroom area and locker room area. See the pink insulation there? That's on the inside of the outside wall. The architects wanted additional uh, insulation on that wall. It has the two inches, you know, in between the brick and the block on the outside, but then there's another inch because there's lots of plumbing behind that wall that is part of the way up. That's just up above ceiling at this point. But there's lots of plumbing behind that, so that's what they wanted additional insulation in that area. And, uh, let's see that. that would be uh, in the corridor. You see the uh, light white bed screen there. That is the uh, cafeteria to the right. We kind of got it blocked off at this time. There's a couple of the lot of plumbing down there. There's some old overhead storm drains and the white uh, plastic storm drains and the others uh, lines to the uh, heating and cooling systems. Uh, he has an update there. That's not really an update. That's a schedule from uh, a month ago. We're still right now it looks like we're pretty well on uh, in line to 
complete there at the end of the year in that area for the unit uh, A area. So the move takes place when, Jim? Is it? Pardon? When, when does the move take place? Yeah, the first one takes place on the 20th. They'll move into that. The east classrooms and the uh, three rooms down the center. And the music room, I think, is clear to the uh, south end of that area. So I get on, I'll get three big rooms, the restroom, art, art room, and uh, two computer rooms. It's in the middle of the section. What percentage would you say we're done here? This project? Uh, project wise? Yeah. yeah. What percentage? We should finish about quarter to nine percent. Yeah, we should finish by end of December. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. That's it. On the new business, except the following grants. We have one from Fulton County Community Foundation for the TM, TVMS and TVHS Library Updates, $10,000. Looks like that uh, was an impact grant awarded to us uh, from library upgrade project the middle school and the high school. If you remember, we were awarded a $20,000 matching grant from the Echo Foundation for that project. Uh, this $10,000 is half of that match, so uh, continue, especially Mrs. Michael continues to work hard to, to do that, and uh, we're doing there, so yeah. we could ask you to accept that grant. Gotcha. I have a motion to accept that. Make a motion to accept that. Brian, you make some motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yeah, I'll second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. On to a K-21 Health Foundation paved walking bike trail at Mentone Elementary for $84,230. Yeah, we're excited about that. So that's going to allow us to put a 10-foot wide paved walking biking trail on the property beside the school that will serve not only kids here uh, at this school but serve the entire community as well. So we'd like to thank the uh, K-21 Health Foundation for doing that. Uh, I think that's just that's going to be a great thing for a lot of folks. Yes, it is. And uh, how far will it go? Or? Well, we're planning on it, it will start out uh, east of the school here in the player and then uh, probably the big field out east of here that we, we own that. Go around the perimeter of that, that would be pretty close to that ball. Okay. I have a motion to accept the K21 foundation grant. I'll make that motion. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? A second. Brian seconds. All in favor of saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. On to the Kosciuszko County Community Foundation paved walk, walking biking trail at Montone Elementary for 3500 that uh, funding will be used to for the same project. Uh, motion to accept. I'll make that motion to approve the County Community Foundations for the paper walk and bike trail. Best brand. Best second. second. And in seconds, all in favor by saying aye. 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 And then we're to uh, the next one, Kuskester County Community Foundation, playground equipment at Mentone Elementary and Burkett for 15000 Yes, we have uh, plans for some major playground renovations in both Mentone and Burkett. Uh, here at Mentone, we replaced the old large piece of equipment out there that we bought in the late 80s. Uh, we'll move that to replace that with a piece of equipment. And then, of course, at Burkett, uh, there really isn't much there right now, so we plan to put a nice new piece of equipment there as well. And uh, we'll be using funds from this grant, uh, funds that we've set aside in capital projects from the school corporation. We'll use part of the money from the partnership with uh, Lutheran Health Network, Cost Hospital Community Hospital. Um, there's a variety of funding sources for those projects, but the bottom line is uh, really going to have some nice new playground equipment for our kids as well as our communities to enjoy. Great. Awesome. I have a motion to approve. 
make that motion. Adam makes that motion to have a second. I'll second that. All right. Seconds, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Some real nice grants. Very nice. Wow. Uh, Mr. Lee has been working hard and uh, exactly. bringing some grants. Appreciate that. On to uh, next approval of donation from Newman Construction. Yes, uh, we would ask the board to accept uh, donations tonight by Rob and Patty Newman of Newman Construction. And uh, we asked Rob and Patty if they would join us tonight. And uh, I think uh, Kathy's here as well. I don't know if you want to come on up and maybe talk a little bit about uh, the one donation to your class and what it entails. And Patty. Well, this watch her pocket. About three years ago, um, I became aware of the Magical Meadows. It is a horseback riding facility. It's located over by Warsaw Oswego type area. And um, just amazed at, at what I see from there. Um, I have a student that has Down syndrome. Nonverbal for the most part, doesn't say a whole lot. The first visit that we took there, she got on the horse. She knew the horse's name by the end of the time. She did the commands. Their big command is walk on when they want their horse to walk on. And clearly and loudly said all these commands. And I was totally amazed by this student. I'm like, now get back to my classroom and read books with us and do this and do that. And it's just, um, their primary thing is they do horseback riding for veterans that have PTSD. They also work with students um, in the area of special education, primarily students with autism and students with emotional disabilities, which I have quite a few of both of those categories. And it's just been something that um, Rob and Patty funded me last year. And the first year, we raised the money on our own to go. We sold things here at school, we baked items, and it's just been very important for the kids to be able to do this. It's something that they can all do. Even our students that are in wheelchairs, we get them out of those wheelchairs and we put them on the horses. There's some great community members that come out and volunteer their time to ride those horses with the kids. I have taken FFA students from here to be helpers, to help those kids be able to participate. It's a half a day thing. We usually try to do five sessions a year. Maybe this year we could squeeze in a couple more than that with this donation. But um, it's just a really great facility and it's a great program for my kids to be able to participate. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you so much. What? How many students do you have? I have about 15 that would be eligible to go to this this year. Oh, wow. so yeah. That's great. So we have a daughter who teaches special ed in Peru. So, yep. special education programs are near and dear to our heart. Um, we also have $500 for the Builder Street class. Our son was involved in Builder Street, and obviously with Rob's business, that's important to him too. So we're going to need. $500 then as well. So. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. You want to get a picture of you guys? Sure, we do. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. We've got a young lady with a camera up here. A couple of young ladies with camera. I'm sure they might like them. I'm sure they might like them. I'm sure they might like them. Yeah, you guys. Smile. Yeah. Come here, Rob. Who was uh, heavily involved in that this year 
Corey Cooper, Middle School Assistant Principal, to come in and talk to us about student prep. Okay, um, real quick, like Mr. Fox was uh, explaining, the first time that I found out that we were interested in the student tracker is when we basically worked with the cell grant and awarded some funds for that, so that kind of helped us um, get that purchase started. And then the next part, um, as you'll notice, basically what the student tracker does, it collects all this data and information that high schools submit about their students. And that same data is kind of correlated with all the colleges. And if you'll notice up here, it talks about there's two to four year uh, institutions, um, public and private, trade and vocational. And 98% of all post-secondary students in public and private US institutions are reported using that data. So it, whether they're in-state or out-of-state, whether they persist means whether they graduate, whether they, they don't graduate, or the next year after that, maybe there's within a six year time period, if they're doing something that six year time period, they'll report that data back. Go to the next slide. And I know it's gonna be hard to see, but these are all the institutions in Indiana that are in state that report using this data. Um, the next slide. And you have access to these reports three times a year, fall, spring, and summer. And this is kind of like, I'll run through some slides here. Uh, it won't take all your time, but this is kind of like a sample report, what it's gonna look like. So if you go to the next slide, you'll notice you'll get some, some data here um, that basically kind of talks to you about your cohorts and your enrollment. And you'll be able to see how those trends are doing. So um, one year you might have a class that might have kids that are graduating in a four-year time span and then you might have uh, some some years where they may not persist so much you might also be able to talk a little bit um, with your staff about how your students are doing overall as far as whether they're going to uh, community college to start with and or whether they're going to a four-year institution or vocational so you can look at your program and how it's your parent so this is talking about the first year after high school to return for a second year. So talk about persistence or retention. Get to the next slide. And then we're talking about completed degree within six years. And go to the next slide. And this this one here is kind of quite interesting. It kind of shows the breakdown of a cohort uh, for different classes. And it kind of breaks it down into whether there was two years, like maybe they did an associate's degree, graduated in three years, graduated in four years five or then graduate in six years. And it happens sometimes where somebody might go to college, they might try out a certain uh, degree field and find out that that's probably not the area they want to go into after they've taken a couple classes and then maybe they switch or maybe they take a year off. Sometimes it could be due to, uh, you know, economic or financial situation, then they go back and then they'll finish the degree into something else and then we'll get data on that. So we'll go to the next slide. This talks about an example of a class itself. So the class 2007 <coughs> sample data, you'll kind of see the trends and how you'll get this report. Okay, let's go to the next one. And then you'll also get a breakdown. This is also kind of a neat uh, amount of data you'll get. It talks about all the universities that your kids can apply to. And you'll notice like where the trends are, or who they're applying with, and who they're getting accepting um, into their university. And you'll, you'll, you might notice that sometimes maybe it's the little course areas, like I said, could be the vocational, and uh, you'll be able to see the number of students, and whether it's in state or out state, and um, public or private. Let's go to the next one. And then you'll get individual student data. And this is kind of the neat part that you can pull this data and you can correlate that. The next slide. Uh, it talks about instantly generating rate of share charge and then the data elements such as gender, race, and econo economic disadvantage. So when you really want to start looking at, you know, not only just your program, but then maybe how certain classifications of students are doing, it really gives you that breakdown as well. And then this is kind of some of the breakdown of their uh, handouts that they, they talk about as far as like why it's useful to certain uh, groups in the buildings. Um, administrators, superintendents talk about analyze the student performance and the trends counselors they can work towards trying to really help guide those students into to certain career paths and then check and see how they're doing with their their stats and then us district and state policymakers like our school board 
for example, looking at new new programs that our schools are putting in place and seeing how well those are doing over the next couple of years. Um, and the last part is when you look at our corporation and we get that student level data and those reports, how we can take that and combine it with our other data that we have, where it's ISTEP or WIDA or IRE, and you can see all the extra ones I have down all the data that we collect, AccuPlace or ACT, SAT, dual credit. We can start looking at that data and comparing it and see if there's any trends that go along with that as well. So it's really kind of a neat thing. You can get up to eight years of data like that you can submit to them and get reports back. And we can actually, with the graduates we just had this past year, um, once we get all of our stuff turned in here pretty soon, we should be able to get a check on them to see how many kids are enrolled and where they're at. So that'll be pretty neat. I'll be able to come back and present that data with you guys and let you start seeing how our last couple of years our cohorts are doing. Excellent. And the last part was we uh, missed out on the last grant, but there's a second go around of the Lilly Counseling Grant. So part of this data too will be able to incorporate into that. And that's really the neat thing about this data that we're collecting, that these metrics that we're trying to establish baselines, that we can use that then to, to apply for other grants and go after more money for a corporation. So all right. Okay, on with number four, TVSC Advanced Ed Accreditation. Listen, Mr. Fowler's going to talk to us a little bit about it. Um, every five years, our school corporation participates in the accreditation process with an organization called Advanced Ed. Um, this organization works with 34,000. Uh, educational institutions in our country and then also in 70 other nations. Uh, they're committed to help institutions improve. Their mission is to lead and empower the education community to ensure all learners realize their full potential. Um, November 5th through the 8th, we're going to have a, a team of five people come to Tippecanoe Valley. Three of them are from Indiana. Uh, there are two from out of state and they will uh, perform classroom observations and interview stakeholders within our school corporation. Uh, our teachers participated in a survey at the end of last year. We've been working on this process for a while. Um, parents can take the climate survey for their students' uh, school now. Those are live on our website. If you go to the, the TBSC uh, Corporation website under the quick links, um, you pull that up and there's a, there's a tab for the surveys and all four schools are listed there. Uh, so parents have that opportunity to take that survey. It's open until October 20th, so they're going to have a couple weeks here to do that. Um, we'll take that data and the, the team from Advanced Ed will look at that data. Uh, they, will, they will take uh, the time to interview folks and um, they, they generate all of that information, put it together in a report, and then send it back to us, uh, usually between 30 and 60 days. And we will use that information to continue with our, our mission here at Tippecanoe Valley, uh, really trying to um, create student success through leadership, literacy, and, and character education. But we're excited about this, um, this opportunity to get some feedback from from our community and we want to show off the great things that uh, we're doing here within our school corporation and give folks an opportunity to, to really shine. Um, so what questions do you guys have? Is there a way we're going out to them <clears throat> for those parents of the students, <clears throat> like admit to an accurate? I mean, are we communicating some side? We just conferences this week. Gotcha. So we'll get out the survey. Yep. So we'll, we'll, we'll probably send some information out. To the, yeah, that's we're going to have it open for two weeks. Thanks, Glenn. Awesome. Appreciate it. Okay, on to our budget adoption. This is the month that we go through and adopt uh, all of our budgets. Um, number one, adoption of the capital projects fund plan. The hearing as required by law on the capital project fund plan was held on September 11, 2017, and the purpose of this portion of the meeting is to adopt the capital projects fund plan. I will ask Mr. Boggs to present proof of publication of the notice to taxpayers of capital projects 
fund plan. Exhibits A and B. It's uh, being shown right now. It's in A. to make the capital projects fund plan and exhibits A and B as part of the minutes of this meeting. I'll make that motion. Right. Makes the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Adam seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 I will ask Mr. Boggs to read the resolution to adopt the 2018 capital projects fund plan, exhibit C. This resolution is adopted by the Board of Trustees of the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation of Kosciuszko and Fulton Counties, Indiana. Whereas a school capital projects fund has been established and whereas the Board of Trustees is required under Indiana Code 20-46-6-5 to adopt a plan with respect to the capital projects fund and whereas the Board of Trustees held a public hearing on the capital projects fund plan on the 11th day of September 2017 at the Mentone Elementary School, Mentone, Indiana. Therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees that the plan for Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation for the years 2018-2020 is hereby incorporated by reference into this resolution. It is adopted by the Board of Trustees plan with respect to the school capital projects fund. Be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees shall submit a certified copy of this resolution, including the adopted plan, to the Department of Local Government Finance as required by Indiana Code 21-40-8-8 for approval, adopted this 9th day of October 2017. Okay. I will entertain a motion to adopt the resolution to adopt a plan for capital projects fund and to publish a notice to taxpayers of adoption of capital projects fund plan and exhibit D. I have a motion. Make that motion. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? A second. Brian seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 On to number two. Uh, adoption of school bus replacement plan. The hearing as required by law on the school bus replacement plan was held on September 11, 2017 and, and the purpose of this portion of the meeting is to adopt the school bus replacement plan exhibit E. I will ask Mr. Boggs to present proof of publication of the notice to taxpayers of the school bus replacement plan for the years 2018 to 2029 exhibits A and B. That's exhibit E. Publications. Publications. Okay. Yes. Okay, I've seen them. Okay. I will entertain a motion to make these exhibits a part of the minutes of this meeting. I'll make that motion. Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Yeah. Adam seconds. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. I will ask Mr. Boggs to read the resolution to adopt the year 2018 bus replacement plan exhibit F. This resolution is adopted by the Board of Trustees of Tiffany Valley School Corporation of Kosciuszko, Fulton Counties, Indiana. Whereas a school bus replacement plan has been established, and whereas the Board of Trustees is required under Indiana Code 20 46 5 to adopt a plan with respect to a school bus replacement plan, and whereas the Board of Trustees held a public hearing on the plan on the 11th day of September 2017 at the Mentone Elementary School, Mentone, Indiana. Therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees that the plan entitled School Bus Replacement Plan for the years 2018-2029 is hereby incorporated by, the ref by reference into this resolution and is adopted as the Board of Trustees plan with respect 
to the school bus replacement plan. Be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees shall submit a certified copy of this resolution, including the adopted plan, to the Department of Local Government Finance as required by Indiana Code 20 40 7 for approval, adopted this ninth day of October 2017. Okay, I will entertain a motion to adopt the resolution to adopt the year 2018 bus replacement plan. That motion for bus replacement. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Ryan seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Let's pass. On to the budget adoption. The hearing as required by law on the budget and tax levies and tax rates was held on September 11, 2017. And the purpose of this meeting is to adopt the budget. I will call upon Mr. Boggs to read the resolution of appropriations, budget form number four, exhibit G. Okay. Be uh, ordained or resolved by the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation that for the expenses of Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation for the year ending December 31, 2018, the sums herein specified are hereby appropriated and ordered set apart out of the several funds here at name and for the purposes here in specified subject to the laws governing the same such sums here appropriated shall be held to include all expenditures authorized to be made during the year unless otherwise expressly stipulated and provided by the law in addition for the purpose of raising revenue to meet the necessary expenses of Tiffany Valley School Corporation Property tax levies and property tax rates as herein specified are included herein. Budget Form 4B for all funds must be completed and submitted in the manner prescribed by the Department of Local Government Government Finance. This ordinance resolution shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage and approval by the Tennessee Valley School Corporation. Uh, you can see the uh, Look at the general fund, the adopted budget is $15,513,355. Uh, there is no tax levy or tax rate to that. The debt service fund, uh, adopted budget is $2,819,325. Uh, the adopted tax levy is $2,943,000. Uh, uh, with the adopted tax rate of 65 and 87 hundredths cents. The capital projects uh, fund adopted budget is $2,531,724. Uh, with the adopted tax levy being $2,424,415. With an adopted tax rate of uh, 54 and 25 hundredths cents. Transportation fund. Adopted budget is $1,920,580. The adopted tax levy is $1,500,699. And the uh, adopted tax rate is 33 and 67 hundredths cents. And then the bus replacement fund would be uh, $294,000 in the adopted budget, $352,424 as the adopted tax levy and the adopted tax rate would be seven and eighty-nine hundredths cents. So if you total all those together, uh, the total adopted budget is $23,078,984. The adopted tax levy is $7,225,334. And the total adopted tax rate is uh, $1.61 and 68 hundredths cents. I will entertain a motion to adopt the resolution of appropriations. <coughs> to make that motion. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? I second. Brian seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. All right, on to number six, adopt the blanket resolution to reduce appropriations. I'll go ahead and read that for you as well. 
Um, whereas for the Tipton Valley School Corporation 2018 school budget, it is determined by the superintendent it is necessary to reduce the 2017 unobligated balances that will not be needed for the purposes for which appropriated. Uh, the superintendent has the authority to make reductions on budget form 4B, budget estimate, financial statement, proposed tax rate. Line two, in any fund to more accurately reflect necessary expenditures. It is further ordained or resolved that the superintendent has the authority to reduce 2018 appropriations on budget form 4B, budget estimate, financial statement, proposed tax rate, line one, in any of the funds or amounts as necessary to finalize the 2018 school budget for the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation. It is further ordained or resolved that the superintendent has the authority to adjust the operating balances on the budget form 4B, budget estimate, financial statement, proposed tax rate, line 11, in any of the funds to finalize the 2018 school budget for the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation. It is uh, further ordained or resolved that the superintendent has the authority to request specific tax rates to be levied for the 2018 debt service and or capital projects funds. It is further ordained or resolved that in 2018, the 2018 debt service fund, an operating balance of $600,000 or more shall be maintained. Dated this 9th day of October, 2017. Do I have a motion to adopt the blanket resolution <coughs> to reduce appropriations? I'll make that motion. Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Adam seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 We're good. No. And done with all that exciting stuff. <laughs> okay, is there any other business? No, not here. No. Okay. About Bryce and Cheyenne, what's going on out at the high school? <clears throat> um, volleyball sexual should come up soon, so hopefully they'll do good. And also, um, like Mr. Connolly said, we have parent teacher conferences coming up and um, fall break, and then it's been the end of the nine weeks, so we're already that far into school. Um, FFA starts solo contest this fall break, and then later the 25th, the National FFA Convention is coming up. So. Um, also, we've had some very interesting guest speakers recently. So, just last week we had guest speaker Chad Varga, who was a well-known basketball player. Um, he shared with us his rough home life and how he persevered and uh, followed his dreams, basically, and he became very successful, which is, his story was very inspirational for us to listen to, especially those who do have rough home lives. Um, also, we've got cross-country runners advancing to regionals. They did very well at sectionals, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then we just got done with College Go Week, which is a week where select Indiana colleges uh, waive their, fee, their application fees. Um, so that was really nice, especially because it's expensive. <laughs> so it was good for us seniors. So. So, good deal. Thank you so much. And I believe if there's nothing else, we're adjourned here this evening. Thank you for coming. Good night.